Magnell equations for the composite beam. In the previous chapter, we have mentioned about the functions of the Magnell diagram. It is basically an effective method for us to quickly decide the pre-stressing force and also the eccentricity of the tendon where the section is likely to pass the stress limit. It is basically a compilation of the Magnell equations which sets the boundary of the feasible region and based on the applicable range of each equation we are able to decide the suitable P and E within the section. These Magnell equations are being constructed based on the four basic equations of the stress that develop within the member as derived from the stress diagram. What you have learned from the previous chapters is the Magnell diagram for a typical pre-stress beam. Now in this video, we are going to discuss about the Magnell equations for the composite beam. The equations will be slightly different due to the characteristic of the composite beam, especially at different stages of the construction. Without further ado, let us look into this. In the previous videos, we have mentioned about two stages of the constructions for the composite member, which is before the hardening of the in-situ slab and after the hardening of the in-situ slab. Before hardening, the sections considered will be purely the precast unit. However, after hardening, the slab will become a part of the member and now the composite member in the form of i being is considered. This will be translated into the Magnell diagram equation, particularly in terms of the loads acting on the member as well as its geometrical properties of the section. These are a few understandings that we need to know. First, the pre-stress force is applied to the precast section. The applications of the pre-stressing force is done prior to the casting of the slab. Therefore, the relevant parameters in the Magnell equations will be P per A, P E per Z, M min per Z, where the Z refers to the section modulus of the precast section. Second, the precast section is used to resist its own self-weight, the weight of the wet concrete of the slab, and also the weight of the permanent formworks. Next, the composite sections will be resisting the live load, the super dead load, and also the additional dead load of the parapets and other permanent fixture. Other than that, you will need to consider for the shrinkage response of the cast in situ slab. You know that the shrinkage is associated with the loss of the free water within the mix and the hardened concrete. The cast in situ slab during the hydration process will undergo a certain degree of shrinkage. This shrinkage of the slab will lead to the shrinkage force and cause the top face of the precast elements in contract. This contraction force will cause the pre-stressed member to bend in stress. The effect of the shrinkage force onto the precast beam here cannot be prevented because the composite member by fundamental will have to ensure good connections and resistance of the slip between the joints of the precast unit and the in-situ slab. Other than that, there is one more consideration you need to consider which is related to the thermal gradient of the cross-section. You know that the member can expand and 
contract due to the changes of the temperature and in the existence of the thermal gradient that means some regions of the sections have higher degree of temperature while another region has a lower degree of temperature there will be combined actions of expansions and contractions and this leads to the stress within the cross sections all this needs to be taken into considerations and this made the Magner equations to be more complex than what we have learned in the previous chapter. Specifically, we are looking into these four equations of the Magner equation. This represents the four basic equations that covers the aspect that we have discussed previously. There will be two main stages, which is at the transfer where the pre-stressing force is applied to the precast section and also at the service where the entire composite actions is put into utilizations in resisting the external load. There will be equations for the top beam and the bottom beam for both the transfer stage and the service stage. Let us first look at the transfer stage. This is a stage where the tendons is being stressed within the pre-stressed unit. At this stage, the in-situ slab is still not there. Therefore, when we need to consider the stress acting in the member, the effects of the in-situ slab is not considered. The pre-stressing force acting on the member will cause the compression force, which is represented by P per A. The self weight of the pre-cast unit here will lead to the bending response and this is represented by M per Z and the eccentricity of the applied pre-stressing force relative to its neutral axis will lead to a counter acting bending stress which is represented by P E per Z. The total stress of the member on top and on the bottom of the beam will be the superpositions of the stresses on top and the bottom of the beam. The symbol plus and minus applies. That gives you these two equations. What you see here, these equations and the stress plots is identical to what you have learned in the previous chapters. As at this stage, the composite actions is yet to be there. And you know that the critical failure of that particular stage, it will be tensions for the top of the beam and compressions for the bottom of the beam. With that, you are able to derive the two equations here in respect to the allowable stress limit. Next, we will look into the service state. These equations and this stress plot diagram here obviously is different from the one that you have learned in the previous chapters. This is where the composite action takes place and there are more parameters to be considered. First, let us settle the simple one. 